Welcome to The Record Show, your virtual spin around the vinyl industry. Brought to you by Radio Wasteland Records. Yes, Midland has a record store. Here's your host, Jim Gleason. Hello everyone and greetings from the Wasteland. Welcome to another action-packed edition of The Record Show. Got a busy one coming your way today. We'll check in once again with Ken Norton from Ingram Entertainment and this week's new releases headed to an indie record store near you. And we'll take another spin from the wasteland with a sunglasses album cover. We had so much fun a couple of weeks ago. But first, record store day drop number two is upon us coming up this weekend, hopefully to an indie record store near you. And as a preface to that, I thought we would take a look at what, in my opinion, are going to be some of the hottest items coming up on this Record Store Day drop. Now, again, remember, Record Store Day drop has kind of a, well, Record Store Day itself is kind of split up into a few different things. They have regional releases, which are available, obviously, in certain regions, more so than others. And you'll kind of get a feel for that if you check with your record store or pay attention to their social media as far as what they may have. There's another thing called Record Store Day Firsts, which means that this is being released on Record Store Day, but there will be a subsequent re-release of this at some point down the line. So that may or may not be the exact same as the Record Store Day, which still makes the, the RSD version a little more preferable to have in your collection sometimes. But if you miss out on it, you will get another chance to snag that album again at some point down the line. Then there is the RSD exclusives. And these are the ones that are quite typically the most collectible, sometimes the hardest to get depending upon the numbers pressed, but also really quite frankly, the coolest that you can get uh, from the Record Store Day. So now Record Store Days, uh, you know, the opinions vary from RSD to RSD, whether it be the normal, if we ever get back to normal one in April or the Black Friday one, the lists come out. People argue about it. They like it. They don't like it. They think it needs more of this, more of that. In my opinion, really, it is a good balance. They usually are. The RSD folks do a great job of trying to hit all of those bases. And I know that there are some folks that think they're trying for a younger audience, but there still is plenty out there for us older collectors in the classic rock realm, in the jazz realm. So there's a lot of great music on there. So don't dispel that too quickly. So again, this Saturday, we here at our store in Midland, Michigan are almost ready for it. We're still waiting on a few items that hopefully will show up in time. We'll hopefully get them this week, but we do have the majority of them. And as far as the fills go, I know we've talked about this before with Ken, as far as the logistics of Record Story Day and how those numbers are divvied up. And it really comes down to demand versus supply. You know, how many are the labels releasing of any given item? If you're curious about that, you can head to the Record Store Day website and they will list whether or not the item that you're looking at is an exclusive, a first run or a regional, and they'll say how many are being pressed of that. So you can kind of gauge for yourself. All of that is handy information when you're trying to map out your plan to go from store to store to store on that day to see exactly what it is you're going to like. So that being said, what are my predictions? for this coming Record Store Day drop number two on July 17th? Well, we'll get to the biggie in a second, but let's start off with where we need to start off with our Record Store Day ambassador for the year, Fred Armiston, comedian, musician, artist. Oh, lots of great things. He's got his hat in a lot. This is Parade Meeting, and this is a, an EP. It's a oh three-song instrumental EP of Fred Armiston's work, and this is being limited to 1,000 copies, and it is a regional release, so you may or may not see this depending upon what area of the states you are in and looking for your Record Store Day stuff. Haven't listened to much of this yet. I'll have to look for it online, but you know things have been a little bit busy of late, so we'll give it a good listen. But cool thing to look for, a collectible, if you are into getting the works of the Record Store Day ambassadors from Record Store Day to Record Store Day. So look for Parade Meeting by Fred Armiston. Okay, now for the biggie. This is the one that I think just about everybody, at least in our neck of the woods, is talking about and hoping to get a copy of. And this is the DGs, AKA the Foo Fighters, and their special release called Hail Satin. 
be careful on that one. This was a late announcement. It wasn't in the lists way back into February and March when they were announced. And quite frankly, we found out about it after the drop number one in June. Surprise announcement took just about everybody, well, by surprise. That's the nature of surprise announcements. But this is a hot item. Right after it was announced, we started getting calls and messages here at our store. Are you going to get a copy? Are you going to get a copy? We put in for a lot of copies and did not get a lot of copies. So even though this is a tremendously high number release, the demand was such that the record labels and the distributors had to, well, ration them out a little bit. So I'm hearing, at least in our area here in the mid-Michigan, some stores are getting plenty. Uh, I know of a couple stores that aren't getting any, and some are just getting a few. We here at our store, Radio Wasteland, are getting a decent amount. We got nowhere near what we were asking, but I think we're coming in at around the halfway point, which is pretty good for this. Now, release-wise, this had 12,000 copies pressed, and it is going to be a Record Store Day exclusive, so you're not going to see this pop up again down the line. I imagine that this is going to be a hot ticket at any of the stores you go to, as well as online afterwards. Watch it, flippers. We're on to you. So hopefully uh, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for this. But if you're unfamiliar with it, the DGs, the Foo Fighters covering the Bee Gees. And there are a lot of great tracks on side one of this. Side two is all live Foo Fighters stuff from a recent tour of their or live performances, rather, of their Medicine at Midnight stuff. So again, this is my pick for what will probably be the most in-demand release coming up. And it may, maybe, depending upon where you are, be a tough one to get, depending upon the numbers that your store ends up with. And again, kind of catch as catch can. I'm seeing some that are, you know, they're getting stacks of them, but they're bigger stores. Not going to complain. We got a few. We're happy, and hopefully our customers will be as well. But definitely one to watch out for. Another big one, as far as our end of the things where folks are requesting, it's the reissue of the Rolling Stones' Hot Rocks, a great compilation album by the Stones. This is a remastered edition by Bob Ludwig. Exclusive. It is an RSD exclusive. Yep. Uh, limited edition, two double LP, 180 gram on yellow vinyl. What makes this cool and a little more appealing is that they're including the original gatefold art when you open that up, as well as some lithographs, two lithographs printed on archival paper. So real high class, highfalutin stuff out there for you Stones fans. But this is an exclusive. Uh, numbers on this, not tremendously high, but not too bad. 7,500 for the country. So over 7,000. Chances are pretty good you'll get this. But if you're a Stones fan, that's a cool one to have as well. All right, this one is an RSD first, and this is Pearl Jam and a 12-inch version of their Alive. And now it's a promotional version. I'm not quite sure what that means. They obviously cut some different demos. Let me try to get my uh, reflections out of the way there. Uh, but it's a limited edition, one-sided 12-inch. Includes three rare bonus tracks. And the B side of this is the stick figure etching logo from Pearl Jam. Number-wise... This is sitting at 18,500 pressed for the country. Oh, by the way, it's the 30th anniversary of 10 is what they are commemorating with this. And again, it's as an RSD first. So chances are we'll see another version of this, whether it's going to be the exact same presentation or not. I doubt it, but there will be another version of this coming out at some point down the line. By the way, this release is also available on a cassette for Record Store Day drop number two. Okay, now getting into this whole idea of not so much remixes, but alternate versions. This was kind of popular oh, on a lot of the Record Store Day drops. Back in June, The Doors put one out for Morrison Hotel. This one comes to us courtesy of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. And these are alternate takes and alternate versions from Deja Vu. CSNNY's second album. And so you're going to get different takes of... Oh, Teach Your Children Well, Woodstock, Our House, all the great stuff that was on this. Now, this is an RSD exclusive and the run, I've checked my notes here, of 10,000. So it's not going to be too hard to get. There should be plenty of these out there. This is the type of thing that may not, because it's the, I, I don't mean to be rude in saying this, but if you think about the alternate versions, one way to say is, oh man, this is cool. These are versions we've never heard before. The other side of that coin is, their versions that weren't good enough to make the album, which turned out to be an iconic classic album in its own right. 
So for new fans, new people, younger folks getting into this, or you've not heard much of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, you're probably better off looking for an original version of this. But for hardcore fans who want to have all of this in their collection, they want to park this really, really cool looking uh, album cover next to your original Deja Vu, this is a cool must have. And again, coming in at 10,000 pressed, probably not going to be too hard to find, but definitely a decent one. Now the cover, by the way, looks to have a little embossing on it, but nowhere near the uh, faux leather cover, uh, cover that the original Deja Vu had, but still a fun one. Speaking of uh, alternate versions, this uh, a jazz one that I'm putting in in our picks is Miles, Davi uh, Miles Davis's Champions. These are rare Miles Davis cuts from the complete Jack Johnson Sessions, his recording for that uh, that album of sorts. I don't know, did it ever come out an album? I have to stop and think about that. Six doses of rare uh, pugilistic groove is how the hype sticker is hyping it on limited edition yellow vinyl. And quite the all-star lineup on this. Uh, it was the Miles Davis um, lineup with Wayne Shorter, uh, Herbie Hancock's on this, Keith Jarrett, Billy Cobham, and a host of others. This is an RSD first which means that it will be out again in some form down the line. But to get the yellow version of this, you've got to pick it up on RSD. Number-wise, we're looking at 7,500, 7,500 of them for the country. So it shouldn't be too hard to find, but uh, I know a lot of folks aren't picking up jazz on that first big push on RSD, so this may be a decent one and an easy one for you to pick up early. On the note of those... Uh, remixes and or different version. These are remixes, so they're kind of different versions. Is Amy Winehouse's, well, simply titled Remixes. It's a double LP on colored vinyl, one blue and one yellow. And the press on this is 13,000 for the country, so shouldn't be too difficult to find. And it is an RSD first, which means that we'll see another version of this down the line, but it probably won't be the colored vinyl. So for your collectors, that you want that record store day version, this is the one to get. Okay, now for a big one. This one is huge, showing up at some stores. This is also an RSD first. This is the Gorillaz G Collection box set, and it is a hefty one. Uh, six of the Gorillaz studio albums from 2001 through 2020, a hefty one. Let's say that you're just starting off as a Gorillaz fan. Might be a cool way. I know a lot of you who are Gorillaz fans probably have this, so I don't believe there's anything different from these versions. It's all black vinyl. Looks to be the original artwork on the inside. It's just a collection of their works put together. Now, the collectible side of this, meaning that this is only a uh, RSD first. So, again, they're going to reissue this at some point in time. Not certain how that reissue is going to differ from these, given that they're all black vinyl and in a box set, other than to say you've got the Record Store Day exclusive, not exclusive, Record Store Day first version. Sorry about that. So collectability-wise, there are only 980 of these box sets out in the wild for Record Store Day Drop 2 on Saturday. So it could be a little bit more difficult to find. We've only got the one here, but you'll have to find it and check it out for yourself. Okay, now... My last pick is probably not going to be a popular one, and they're out there. Um, if you've not seen the videos of these, search around on YouTube for the Thai Elephant Orchestra. This is some fun stuff, and it's great that they decided to press this on an LP. Now, questioning, you're having a question, what is this? Well, it is exactly what it sounds like. The hype sticker on the, on the back says, Elephants in the Taiwanese Jungle playing specially designed instruments, uh, and the elephants improvise their own music. Okay, so these folks went out to the jungle, had an elephant, it's from the Thai Elephant Orchestra um, and the Thai Elephant Conservation Center. So this is a conservation place for elephants. And I don't want to say that they're domesticated, but obviously they're having fun. The videos, you can actually see the elephants banging gongs and cymbals and drums and smashing onto keyboards and playing horns. That's what this is. So it is pretty much it. Uh, limited wise, there are 1,350 of these roaming around on Record Store Day. It is an RSD first. So if you miss that version, chances are you'll still be able to pick it up. But I think this is, it's not going to be a top, top seller, but it's definitely a fun one. And that is truly what Record Store Day is all about, is getting some really cool and unique releases. 
So hopefully that helps. Those are the ones that I think are going to be big and uh, mostly sought after at record store day at record stores around you. Indie record stores, by the way. No flippers allowed. You guys can take a seat and we will uh, get back at it. Now, as far as our store goes here in Midland, Michigan, those of you who are within uh, striking distance can come by the store, obviously, on Record Store Day. We will be doing a live preview. This is just a portion of the stuff that we've got, but we normally do a special live preview of everything we've got in the store. Talk about numbers, talk about availability, talk about rules and how we're doing things on that day. We'll be doing this on the Friday night before, so Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern from our store here in Midland, we'll do our live preview for those of you who are close enough to come visit us on Record Store Day Drop number one. Now, if you wanna make sure you don't miss that live preview, make sure you hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Subscribe, give us a like, give us some comments, let me know what you think on there. All of that helps. And if you hit the subscribe button and enable notifications, your phone or your computer will let you know when we put new content up. We're always, always appreciative of that. So again, here's hoping you guys have a successful and more importantly, fun Record Store Day drop number two coming up this Saturday. Joining us now on the Record Show, once again, Ken Norton from Ingram Entertainment after a short RSD hiatus. Ken, welcome back. You been busy? Oh, been a little <laughs> busy, uh, just like you're about to be. About to be. How, uh, just before we get to this week's new releases, what, uh, in your opinion, how did things go for the record store day drop for, from your guys' end, getting it out to the stores? Well, it went it went pretty smoothly, uh, comparably to uh, to some other times. Uh, so that uh, it, we we had uh, not to get in the weeds too much, but we had way more customers this year than we did last year, and so we had some adjustments to make that we made from the drop one to drop two and got things out earlier. Uh, and use some better truck lines in some cases than, than we used last time. They're a little more reliable. So uh, stores across the country should, uh, in the, by and large, be happy and then have lots of stuff for folks this Saturday. Good. Was there anything big in there that you're hoping to get this time me, around? Me personally, uh, yeah. I would love to have that Aretha Franklin set, that live cool. set. So I have to try to get my local... Uh, store here in Charlotte. I can't, buy, I can't buy it from the company I work yep. for because that's against the rules. Yep. So uh, I have to get it at an actual store on Saturday and hopefully it doesn't sell out before I can get over there. Well, good luck to you on that. You know, addition, additionally to the Record Store Day stuff, we have got our new releases and that's not letting up. There is some cool stuff this week, isn't there? There's, it's a good week, actually. Um, nice things to pick up, uh, particularly uh, you can pick these up on Friday or wait on Saturday and fight the and fight the crowd but uh there's a black pumas uh this is the uh, first thing they put out since uh they're highly uh popular and uh oh, that's you know, a fantastic record holy claimed. cow yeah just they're just blowing up uh not a new album of not a new studio album but uh something recorded live in the capitol studios uh and there is some material on there that wasn't you know uh, songs that they didn't put on their their album previously uh, so a lot of people waiting on that, including me. That's coming out this Friday. And uh, there's a brand new record from John Mayer called SOB Rock. And uh, I think that <laughs> Any might ideas? a nod towards his reputation, maybe. There we go. Uh, but uh, John Mayer, I thought he was, he could play I thought he was way. just sad. <laughs> sad. No. Maybe sad. I don't know. Uh, you know, when he's not dating starlets, uh, <laughs> he plays a pretty mean guitar. So There we go. And uh, there's a, a really interesting uh, record that's associated with the comic book world. It's called uh, Dark Nights. Uh, and uh, shucks, what's the uh, full title here? I think I have that up here. Death Metal Soundtrack. Uh, and uh, it's uh, inspired by a comic book series, DC comic book series. And the indie stores like uh, uh, Radio Wasteland are going to have a exclusive indie version, which has electric smoke colored vinyl and an exclusive Superman front cover. So can't get that at the, at the mall That's or pretty on cool. Amazon or anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, look for that. And uh, also Scott Pilgrim versus the world that yes. music soundtrack. Uh, they're putting that out again for us on uh three LPs, one's blue, one's pink, and one's green. 
I think that those are random, if I remember right. Uh, dude, I, I, I like change the color of my vinyl once a week or so, but I think it's going to be a random one. You get one of the colors of Ramona's hair oh. and randomly. Well, there you go. I was looking at the illustration <laughs> that I had, and I thought it was it's, it's misleading to make you think it's a three-record set, but I remember reading on this when the picture discs came out saying that they would just insert a random Ramona hair color into the vinyl. Okay. There, Still glad, really cool, though. Glad you picked up on that. Uh, yeah, very cool. And of course, you know, people love that that movie and, and the soundtrack yep. was so important to it. Yep. Well, cool. Anything else fun that we can look forward to? I think that's this week's uh, big titles. Uh, and of course, you know, loads of things on Saturday with a record store. Now. <laughs> we'll have fun with it. Ken, thanks again for joining us. And you have yourself a great, great record store day. And hopefully you can take a breather for at least a couple of months. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you too. I might have to take some time off. There we go. <laughs> Thanks. See you later. All right. Cheers. And finally today, a couple of weeks back, we had some good-natured fun looking at an album cover where we had some questionable decisions in album cover art design by Daryl Tukes, most notably his sunglasses in that. If you remember, we could see the reflection of the photographer and tripod in there. Well, shortly after that, we get the reissue for the newly reissued Almost Famous with a really properly done cover with sunglasses on there and uh, the artistic representation of the audience and the reflection. So that got me thinking. There's a lot of other cool albums out there with sunglasses on the cover. Just most notably here in our store, we can pick up one from Saga with another cool one. Uh, again, On the Loose, the big hit off of that one. And from somebody that I'm only marginally familiar with, but has been sitting in our store for a while, is Zwall. Now, those reflection is actually just mirrors in the sunglasses on there. So if I'm missing one, and I know there's a lot more, go ahead and please let me know in the comments what covers you see out there with sunglasses on them and whether or not the reflections and the artistic side of things are done well and look actually cool. But we're going to end today with yet one more of them that came into the store. And it's an album from 1980 by Chevy Chase. Now, we'll take a spin from the wasteland and listen to a cut from this, which is tremendously interesting, by the way. But we're also going to include this in the questionable decisions in cover art design category. But although I think this one was done on purpose, knowing the humor of Chevy Chase, if you look very closely at his sunglasses, you'll see the reflection of a keyboard and two hands playing that keyboard. See where I'm heading with that? Okay. I'm guessing that that was a big joke on Chevy's part, even though he's holding his sunglasses. Either that or Chevy has really got three arms and a little too close to a nuclear accident. Now, the album is a comedy record. Don't kid yourself in any way, shape, or form. Yes, Chevy has some musical chops, but he's using those chops to chop away at some very famous songs, including I Shot the Sheriff. It gets a little disturbing. And most notably, The Beatles. Okay, you folks have a great record store day, and we will see you next time from The Wasteland. Thanks for watching The Record Show. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe to the Radio Wasteland Records YouTube channel. And be sure to hit that notifications bell so you'll be alerted every time we upload new content.